Hey guys, it's David from 3D Make It, and today we're talking about setting the Z probe offset for your BL Touch or any bed leveling probe. Let's go! So maybe you have one of these, or, or maybe a probe like this. A BL Touch or an inductive probe is a great way to level your bed. In the past, we went through how to set this up in Marlin and configure it on an SKR board. So from here, we're gonna take it on how to set the Z offset of that probe. Before we get into setting the offset, let's just throw out there why we would be using a leveling probe to start with. Probably the first reason you go for a leveling probe is, well, to stop leveling. Now, not to say you stop completely manually leveling your bed, because your bed should be relatively close to level for most of these probes to work properly. But to auto level our bed, we do take away a lot of that manually bed leveling that we do almost every other print if you're really hard getting the print off the printer. The next thing is all print beds aren't built flat. Especially at the hobby level, we're getting aluminum beds that have slight warps, divots, valleys, and these probes help to accommodate for those by digitally leveling the bed. So it can be flat, but if there's a dip, these probes can help with that. Now there are some people out there that will say, well, the Ender 3 or even a Prusa are fairly small printers bed-wise, so why do we need to worry about auto-leveling? Well, again, those beds might not be flat, and honestly, I've enjoyed the auto level on both of my Enders, and one cost me less than $11 to put on. So really, the argument against it is fairly shallow when we consider that the benefits of bed leveling help with so many aspects of that first layer and a good print. In this video, I'm going to be talking more about how to level the bed with the terminal than baby stepping. Now, the terminal requires a connection to the printer, so you're going to have to use Pronterface or Octoprint or a similar interface that can send commands to the controller. For this video, we're gonna use Octoprint. You know we love Octoprint and have used it a bunch on the channel. So we're gonna jump into Octoprint and I'm gonna show you exactly how to get your Probe Z offset set. So here we're just connected to my Ender 3. Uh, we can see that right now the build plate is not clear. It has a print on it. So before you even start this process, make sure that your print pad is clear. So we'll just pop off Cali Cat there and clean off the skirt that's on the build plate. Perfect. Now we're going to come into the terminal. The first thing we're going to have to do is have the printer homed. So we're going to do that right now. Remember, in the last video, if you have set up your probe and you run a G28, it will home your printer and it will safe home your printer. This means that the print head will end up in the center of the printer. So we can actually see that happening here. Um, my printer will home Y and X first and then it will come down on center uh, right in the middle of the bed. Now we already showed how to set all that stuff up. But that is the first step. So the first step is homing the printer and getting that Z right in the middle. Now once that printer is homed, your console will stop echoing busy and we can move on to the next step. Perfect, we're all homed. Uh, our, our nozzle is in the middle here so I can show you. So our hot end is in the middle. So you can see here that my probe touched down just before the bed and centered it. Now it's important to note, I'm doing this on an inductive probe, but the BL Touch works the same way. All the steps are the same. So the first thing is home. The next thing is we want to record the value that's there. If you've already set up your printer and let's say you're retuning the value or you're going to update your firmware, we want to make sure that that process is easy to do. So I'm going to run an M851. M851 will report the current probe offset. So you can see here that we have three values. We have a value for X, which is minus 48.4. So this value means that my probe is to the left of the nozzle, 48.4 millimeters. 
And then when we go to the y at 14, minus 14.2, sorry, that means that the probe is in front of the nozzle, 14.2 millimeters. And our z offset is telling us how far our z is away. So how far that probe is from the nozzle. So the height going up and down. Now, my probe right now is set to z minus 2.42, and it's actually dialed right in there. So I'm going to remember this number. So we're going to copy all of these. The one we're going to be dealing with though today is the Z, but I'm just going to copy that whole probe offset line and we're going to save it for later. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually turn off some of our settings. So we want to turn off software end stops. So to do that, we're going to issue M 211 S zero. And then you'll see that my software end stops are off. The next thing we're going to do is clear the Z offset value. So we're going to issue M851 Z0. Now this resets the Z offset from before, so it takes it back to zero. So what we can do now is we're just going to save this. So an M500. And then we're just going to go M501 to be sure that our settings are using those um, settings stored in the EEPROM. And once all that's done, we can hit G28. Just once again, we're just going to home our Z axis this time. So G28 Z. And that will bring our Z back to the zero we need it for our next process. Once it's there and done processing, we can actually bring our access to true Z zero. Easy to do. We're going to use this command a few times. So what we're going to do is issue G1 F60. Z0. Now Z0 will move it to 0 on the offset and we're actually going to go down lower than 0 and that is why we went through and cleared those software end stops so that they were off. The list of things you need to actually do this physically is fairly simple. A piece of paper, some card, a stock, whatever you usually do to manually level your bed is what you are going to need. Because now we're going to put that under the nozzle and we're going to slowly lower the nozzle until we get a nice level. Just like we would when we're doing corner to corner. So after all of that we can get our card stock and tuck it in. So once your card stock's in we're basically going to start moving the z-axis down. So from here we can come back to our command that we use G1F60Z or Z. And what we can do is change that to negative. And I always like to start at the whole numbers. So I will start at one. So negative one, hit enter. That will move the axis down and towards the bed. Then you go back to your card stock. And we just check to see if we're close yet. And like you can see here, I was not close. That's flying around still. So I'm going to put my cardstock back and then I'm going to go back to my octo print and we're going to run the same thing and we're going to go minus two. So this is moving it to the exact position. So we're not adding minus two to the one. When we issue this command, it's moving it to minus two. So it's moving it down. If you hadn't have shut those end stops off, it would not move at all. <laughs> so that is why we need to move it down. So we can hear, see here that it issued the command and it was successful. So then we go back again and we check. Now we know from before that my offset was around 2.4. So two, you can see even in the camera that is getting closer to the nozzle. So when you feel it getting closer, then I move into halves. So I'll come back into my other window. So again, octo print. And now that we know we're getting close, I'll go 2.5. Now 2.5, we'll move it down a little more. Keep your card or your paper underneath it, just in case it goes a little too far. That way you won't damage your bed. So like this is getting pretty good. Like it's in there and it's important to note that your printer should be warm because of thermal expansion. And so like now I'm getting a little bit of drag and you can tell on the camera that I'm getting drag there. So we're getting close. So we know from before that my number I was using was around 2.46 in there. So I mean it was 2.42 or at 2.5. So those are actually really close probe wise and 
probably the reason I could explain the difference in this setting from before is I changed the bill plate. I switched the bill plate from a flat flex deal to that Creality uh, textured PEI. So that's probably the difference. And that one has a little bit of a ridge and a valley in it. So since I know though for sure I was printing okay at my old offset value, let's bring that up just so we can see what it was. And we can see here that my old offset value for Z was minus 2.42. And that was actually doing fairly well. So I'm gonna split the difference in my case, but once you get to a point where you're happy, and for me this 2.5 is feeling happy. The paper underneath here is dragging just the way I like it. So you can see this drag here. So I might even just leave it at 2.5 and we'll see how it prints. So that's pretty good. So once we're happy with it, and I'm gonna leave mine at 2.5, we just have to enter a few commands. So the first thing we wanna do is get the new offset value in there. So that's M851, and then you put the value of the Z that you liked. So here we had Z minus 2.5, so I'm putting minus 2.5, and I hit enter. That stores the value in M851. Now the other place that I want to fix again, so to speak, is M211. M211, I want to turn on my software end stops again. So I'm going to go M211 S1. Once that's all back to normal, we can M500 this. And we can M501. So it's really important to run the 501 after the 500 because we've saved it, but we want to make sure those EEPROM settings are running. So M501 will make sure of that. And we can scroll through here and it lists the settings right after you run M501 if you have it configured in your firmware. And you can see here my old matrix that it built for my bed level. So that's the G29. And then it also underneath here has our probe offset. And you can see here that there's our new offset. It's ready to go and it's in there. So that's really good. We're gonna run a test print at minus 2.5, see how it works, but I am sure it's gonna be fine. So just one last time, because I'm paranoid, I will run M500. So the steps, if you want them all at once, are as follows, and I'll leave the graphic up actually through the whole thing, but we'll leave it up here just so we can see the steps for a bit longer if you wanna copy them down. Okie dokie, let's check that Benchy. So I haven't done any cleanup on the Benchy, but there's a few little wispy strings, but all in all, it's not terrible. Uh, <laughs> zoomed in, it's huge. If we just tip it here, we can see that we have a pretty good squish on the first layer. It might be a little too much squish, so you can judge that for yourself as you're going, but you can see how that if we look at like even like the XYZ over here, it's kind of disappeared. The only letter I see is the three. So that 2.5 might be just a little bit too much squish, but there is no visible elephant footing on it. So it could have been just the way the Creality glass makes it look as well. But that Benchy looks great. And just to compare, here is a print done with the old offset. And you can kind of see the, uh, let's just get it right there, good. You can see that the, va the, the Z squish is, it could just be a little bit more. And if you're wondering, yes, it is Cali Cat. The most Cali of all cats. So that's how I like to do it, and that's how we do it out of the box. But once you get printing and your printer's in the wild for a while and you want to just adjust the squish on the first level, there is the baby stepping menu on your controller that can off change the offset as it's printing. But we're just showing you how to set it initially. If you want to see a baby stepping video, hey, Leave some comments, throw some likes on this video, and we'll make that baby stepping video happen. So thanks. If you made it this far, you guys are awesome. Thanks again for following along. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button and share these videos around. You guys are awesome. And until next time, have a good one. <laughs>